Welcome to another installment of Eat, Sleep, Play, Talk, Wrestling, Repeat. As I play as Chris Jericho in the Triple Threat match for the NXT Championship against Mark Henry and Sima Zayn in the Triple Threat Hell in a Cell match. While we're talking about NXT, this is going to be a topic for this video. It's about NXT becoming, becoming the brand. And um, why I say they become the brand? In a recent NXT episode, while they went to Ohio for the Arnold Schwarzenegger convention, Chupa H said that this is not a developmental brand, this is a real brand. And which, as he's shown in tons of proof of it, that NXT is a, is a, is a legit brand, which is true, and you can't deny it. Now, others may other may say that it's still a developmental brand because once you hit that peak in NXT, they promote you up to a main roster, uh, which that is true. And sometimes they become successful, and some it's a flop. I mean, I can name out small amount of rosters, but that's the proof is right there in front of your face. But I think NXT is a legit brand because for the past, I think for the past years. We've seen NXT grown. I mean, from the very first episode of NXT, way before the WWE Network, they were treated like a competition show. When you got the the Miz mentoring Daniel Bryan, you got Chris Jericho mentoring Wade Barrett, um, others superstars being mentored from seeing Punk mentor Derrick Young at the time to Tyson O'Neil, all the guys back in the day. And had a little, you know, competition, had a little small little mini games like trivials, uh, had to run through obstacle course, you know, do some small things, and also had little matches, you know, showcase the, the young talent. And since then, they went to ramp to from NXT to the second season of NXT, we got the Divas and more Indies guys like Loki, he was there, and the winner get the shot for it for any title, and Loki didn't win the Intercontinental Championship. I don't know why, but I'm glad he didn't. And then transform into NXT Redemption, and then start have their own identity, and transform into a a developmental brand that take very seriously and showcase on on the WWE Network. You know, as the year progressing, and we see a growth, and it becomes so so popular. It didn't you know have it didn't turn overnight. It is transform it slowly way before the T NXT takeover when they had the first NXT champion and Seth Rollins won the tournament and then they started building up the tag team when when Andrew Neville's and I think was, I forgot I forgot an old, old um, partner name who won the NXT tag team title so from information and after that NXT women title and then bam you got your own brand until they have their first NXT takeover and start have that buzz and people start talking about it and they pay more attention to it and then have their second NXT takeover they fade forward then other NXT event and they treat like like a pay-per-view event but on WWE network level and then the fans start you know, gravitate towards to them because it was fun to watch had great matches and they treat the title as prestige and treat as a as respect and the fans they want to see more NXT and plus as you can tell on Raw they see some signs like NXT is better than Raw and we want to see Kevin Owens tons of names of it and and people start taking notes and not only that the main roster you know seem a little bit upset which I mentioned in a previous video a long time ago about it when main roster had little meetings and stuff, but the fans talk and they take notice. I mean, think about it. Now NXT have their own replica championship belts. They have their merchandise from the WWE superstar, not superstar, NXT wrestlers, and they have their own action figures. So far, they have figures for Andrew Neville's, um, Sima Zayn to come soon, and Tyler Breeze. Um, hopefully, there'll be more. And, Cross my fingers for elite figures, and now you got Sasha Banks, who's gonna be a peer for the WWE 2K16 
um, later this this year, along with other NXT rosters as well. So they distanced themselves as being a developmental brand as a legit brand. But people still point out that it's part of WWE. They're part of the developmental brand. And once you make your main rosters, we don't know what their future may be. Because right now, there's, they start back to rumors again about either bringing back Adrian Neville as Adrian Neville or bring him to some Mighty Mouse character. But like I said, it's just a, um, a rumor. But so far, we see Lucha, Lucha Dragon appear in main event. And sometimes Superstar, we see Sasha Banks. She appear uh, in the Dark House shows. And sometimes be on the main event as well. So they showcase NXT, which that's a good thing. And also, the thing about doing some more touring, and I wish they had been doing in in a, in an Orlando area, but it's the first time they're stepping out of the Orlando area when they did the show in Ohio. So and now they talk about you know doing some indie scenes, you know doing doing some schedules directly towards the Ring of Honor, or competing against Ring of Honor, and Alan Death to try to. So, so called rating the talent. Uh, when I heard it before, it reminded me of the story when WCW and ECW, I mean, WCW and WWE start snatching talent away from ECW, um, mostly from WCW, from the cruiserweights to, you know, great talent, uh, like Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Hubert Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, tons of names. And that's what, that's what popped into my mind when I heard about people taking. Uh, wrestlers from Ring of Honor and bring them to NXT. Um, to be honest, I I prefer to see somebody like if someone tell me, well, somebody from the NCAA who is a Division One wrestler is going to development center to go to NXT. I would be fine with it. I'd be cool with it. But if I heard news about the Briscoe brothers is going to the NXT. Others may be happy, but me as a Briscoe fans, I can't see it happen. You know, I know everybody's saying all oh, the WWE is the number one spot to go to. That's where the money is at, but I just can't see that. And you know, they will water them down. Eventually, they will water them down from the promo to the matches. I mean, it'll be to me, in my opinion, it'll be disaster. That's my opinion. But for NXT, try to get, try to put their foot. In the NXT, I mean, I put a foot, would have put a foot in the Indies scenes. I think it's best for NXT to stay their own lane because what they're doing right now is great, you know, touring, you know, showcase the NXT talent, the rosters, and the match is great. But try to compete up against Ring of Honor, PWG, or any other Indies, it's a bad idea. Of course, they got the production, the money, and everything else. But when you look at the matches of Ring of Honor, they put ball to the walls. They bring fans. They the fans, you know, gravitate to the matches. NXT, they can go so far, but they pretty much can reach that top level. But we look at Ring of Honor. I mean, the Kingdom versus the Briscoe Bills and the Armageddon match in a 12-3-4 match. They show a highlight clips of the match, and it was amazing. I can tell that match was off the chain. I mean, you won't see that in NXT, but you probably see some great match quality, at some speak. So, and plus the fans, between the Indies fans and NXT fans, they sort of alike, but sometimes the Indies fans have some respect. Respect, Because uh, I remember when... Uh, Hito Atami have his first match and the fans start chanting Kenta name and some of the crowd or should I say half of the crowd start booing and try to shut the fans up in which it was you know wrong of them because let them let them chant what they chant if they want chant if they want let them chant Kenta name let them chant I would I would do the same thing too same thing with Finn Baylor if they want chant Prince David same thing but NXT fans show respect, but Indies fans they show high respect, cause they could ch- they could chant where they want to chant. They want to, you know, pay respect to certain wrestlers. But if you try to bring the NXT to the Indies crowd, they may not like everything they may do, 
they may they may do in the ring, but they might cheer for their personal favorite wrestlers, from Kevin Owens to Hito Itami, Adrian Neville's, even Sima Zayn. So they're going they're going to root for their guys, and hopefully down the road for NXT. I hope we do see him being the big show. You know, I can't believe they didn't put NXT showcase in WrestleMania. I wish that'd be a good look for them. And plus, hopefully, we probably see NXT in the SummerSlam down the road, and that'd be great. Well, that's my video. Um, give me your feedback. Leave a comment. What do you think about NXT as a legit brand? Are they good? Are they good enough being the indie scenes? Let me know. Until then, I see you guys in the next video. Until then. See ya.